Hello YouTube, back here at the rental remodel. This is day six and uh, we're gonna continue on the removal of the subfloor in the kitchen in the utility room. And I'll uh, take the camera off myself and kind of show you exactly what I'm talking about. And that's where we're gonna start. All right, here we go. Okay, just starting here in the kitchen, you can see we've got several different types of subfloor. We've got this uh, four inch tongue and groove pine. We've got some uh, three quarter inch plywood that's been replaced at some point. The original old oak diagonal subfloor. And then back here, we've got some more uh, four inch pine tongue and groove running the opposite direction. So plywood's a good subfloor. That original oak is a good subfloor if it hasn't been undermined by the joist being cut out. So we're gonna have to do a little investigation into that first. Then uh, we'll pull this plywood up as well and really get a diagnosis of all these joists. Make sure the joists are all in good shape. Try to level them off as best as possible. Uh, I'm not expecting it to be 100%, but we should be able to make it better and at least solid. So that's the goal here in the kitchen. I'm gonna tear out all this over here as well. And uh, let's look in the laundry room. So here we are walking into the laundry slash utility room. You can see the floorboards go this direction and the floor joists actually go perpendicular. And what that means is I can literally cut right up to the walls on these two sides without undermining these interior walls. So I'm gonna remove all this tongue and groove pine and at that point address all the issues with the floor joists in here that we diagnosed yesterday. And then this will all be replaced with three quarter inch uh, pine or uh, plywood. Now I will have issues when I get over here to the edge of the house because the joists go this direction, I can't cut the subfloor mid joists. So I'll have to stop over here somewhere where the first joist starts so that we have a solid subfloor from this joist to the exterior sill. So I'll, I'll have to be careful with that, but I will be able to get most of this out, get real good access, uh, especially once this furnace is moved and we get this all uh, same as the kitchen, leveled out, uh, properly supported, joists fixed, new joists probably have to be added, but uh, we're just going to try to get some access for right now and see what we're dealing with. Okay, before I get started on this, I did want to mention, you know, this is a good 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. These days with COVID and everything, plywood is expensive. So this is anywhere from $45 a sheet on up, depending on where you're at in the country. So taking that in regard, I am going to try to salvage as much of this plywood as possible. I can use it either here or back in the utility room. And so in order to do that, I wanted to show you one of the tools I was gonna use, just your regular four and a half inch grinder with uh, a 40 grit flap disc. You can get these at Home Depot or even Harbor Freight. They're expensive, but I found if you go on Amazon, I'll put a link down in the bottom, uh, you can get a, a multi-grit pack uh, a heck of a lot cheaper, and they work awesome. So here I'm going to show you a little clip of removing some of this thin set so I can get to the screws to attempt to remove this plywood in one piece. So there you can see, uh, real easy, it cuts through that thin set real quick. Just make sure to wear a uh, breath mask, 
and ear protection, but this plywood will be just fine after a little bit of work. So definitely worth saving 45 bucks. Okay, just wanted to point out a um, problem I've noticed. You can see they've added joist here and then just tacked on some nailers to this existing joist right here. And this is where the problem is. This is just a shortcut, but you can see that joist is not hitting that beam and it's not in good shape. And so by adding these nailers, yeah, you can nail your plywood down, but I don't know if you can see This whole beam twists. So that's not good. Um, I know why they did it this way. You can see over here, they tried to nail through this oak plate right here. And it's probably 100 years old. And those nails just didn't make anything any way through. So what they really should have done is, well, two things. They should have pre-drilled and screwed it in, and they should have also included some joist hangers on this side. So that's what we're gonna do when we put in new joists, uh, unless we sister them and they're sitting on a plate. But that's the plan for right now. Makes a little more sense why the floor was failing. So, all right. Okay, so another thing I wanted to mention, uh, this portion of the kitchen, which I imagine was probably part of a back porch at one time. These are two by six joists and they are 24 inches, maybe, maybe more than that, uh, off center of each other. There's no way, I mean, we're looking at a, probably an eight or nine foot span. That's just undersized. So not only are we going to resupport these joists or replace them, we will also be adding in uh, additional joists as well. It looks like on the other portion of the kitchen, we might be looking at a two by eights, but again, I'll have to check my sizing chart. That seems small. So what we're probably gonna end up doing is adding in the center of each joist, adding a support with a uh, four by four, jack the center the bow out of the center and uh, try to correct it as much as possible but without causing any damage in the house okay youtube so you can see i've torn out a lot of the flooring exposing the joists and the bad shape they were in started off on this first joist just cut it down here because i'm going to replace all these went down to the other end and you can see they've got this little ledger board holding the joists or so helping support the joist but it's broken loose there's one nail right here granted it's big but comes right out and that joist is free floating so lesson to be learned when you do open something up like this you're gonna come up with further and further problems but it's best to, while you have it open, fix them all at that point because you can't, you know, pull the floor up easily again. So we're going to fix all these joists, resupport, try to lift the floor up where needed, get it all leveled, but, and redo some plumbing while we're at it uh, before we cover it back up with plywood. Okay, so here's another surprise we found. Uh, buried under the kitchen is where the main water comes into the house, there's the main shutoff. Of course, if you ever needed it, you're never gonna be able to find it. And it immediately reduces down into half inch, and then that feeds the rest of the house, the water heater, etc. So I don't like that at all. What I'm going to do is tie in to the three quarter inch pipe run it to where the new utility slash laundry room will be and have the main shut off there and then i will run three quarter inch to the water heater and everywhere and basically just reduce it down to half inch 
at the, for instance, at the sink and uh, bathroom, etc. So that's part of the plan. Okay, so I am in the hole that used to be half of the kitchen. You can see the plumbing behind me and there's the remains of some of the floor joists. I probably will call it a day today. I'm going to go ahead and make a shopping run. I need to buy a bunch of uh, wood for floor joists and plumbing supplies to rerun the plumbing here under the kitchen and get that all done while I have access to it, while it's easy to do. And uh, by the time, oh, I'm going to pick up a 20 ton jack as well. So by the time I'm done with that, I will probably run out of time for today. If I have a little more time, I will probably move the rest of this trash pile and stage it in the garage with the rest of the trash. So that's where we're at. This is day six. Appreciate you watching. Thank you. Bye.